It's weird to be back here, man. It always feels like no time has passed. But it really, then I start walking down the street and it's like being in uh, a dream in the sense that like everyone's got the wrong face, but I know who they are. But uh, <laughs> wait, how, how long were you here? Only like a year and a half, almost two years. But it was such a profound time. It was like, it was like putting myself through art school. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's always gonna be like a big, a big part of your life. Oh, like a big moment where you can remember is like when you're getting in there and learning. Yeah, you know, I grew up in Jersey, but uh, I've been here, coming here ever since I was a little kid. Uh, I was, I always had like a, the relationship of that I have with New York because I get to step away and like kind of look at it from the outside a little bit, being in mm -hmm. New Jersey, but then I still get to have all the fun of it. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a grandparent rather than a parent. Right. You know, you get to have all the fun, but then you get to go away and <laughs> do all that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I, I don't know, like it's, it's a weird thing. I mean, I grew up in Hoboken and stuff, and it wasn't like. It's easier than New York, or you know, and, and, and doing all that stuff, or, or doing maybe what you tried to do, or did. But I think it's also gotten harder. You know, like there was a back in, back in the days, even before my time, you know, our time. It was like there was so many grants and so many things that they were doing for artists. So anyway, that, that kind of kind of gone away more, which I think is why you see all that. I don't know if you want to call it gentrification or whatever, but like the, the change of Disney World of, of Midtown and all that, you know, and, and stuff like that. And because of all that kind of like left, like the, like the great part of the 70s and 60s and all that was because there was, they were giving out grants and money to artists to live in the village and all that, you know, and that's what brought all that, like, you know, so. I find that interesting that you grew up knowing that there was a environment right across the river yeah. that was supporting people being artists. Yeah that was the biggest place in the world. Like for me, it was a super intimidating thing to ever, to come up here the first time. But for you, it was your... No, it's, it's what I was, over. yeah. Well, I mean, when you look it up in Marvel Comics or, what, or you know, you see like, the, I look, you look at the Indicia, the, uh, the address of Marvel Comics, even to this day, they're still in New York. But it's like, holy shit, that's right there. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like literally, I, I pass by there all the time. So I didn't know that building was, what, you know. And so, and then DC Comics, you find out that they're, they're right there in New York. They were in New York, you know? Yeah. And so, like, the two biggest companies growing up were, like, right there. And, and I would go there all the time, just hop on the pad train and go over and then be in the, you know? Me and a friend of mine, actually, one time, who also wanted to be an artist. One time, we just literally just went to Marvel. Like, because we knew where, <laughs> like, you know what, fuck it, let's go. And then we went up, and I wish I could remember who it was, because I didn't know at the time, especially being at that age, I didn't, you didn't know faces, not like nowadays, you don't know faces. But we literally just knocked on the door, and then some guy opened it, probably from the bullpen, probably working on some issue that's late. You know what I mean? And he's like, he's like, yeah. I was like, yeah. Well, and I forgot what my friend made up a name. I was like, we're just here trying to see or whatever. Or I maybe picked one of the editor's names. And then he was like, no, he's not here. He was like, get out of here. You know? Like, no, but can we? And we try to like look past them. How see. old were you? We were like fourteen or something. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. You know, you're like, we yeah. literally just went there and did that. <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, but so that's Jack was, Kirby comes up like, yeah, get yeah, off yeah. my lawn. Exactly. Yeah. Punks. That's what I'm saying. It was probably freaking like Jabu Sema or something. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, we don't even know. It must have been incredibly empowering to know that it was within that kind of reach. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the thing I tell people, you know, when younger artists or, or, or newer people were like ask about like, you know, advice or, or like when I was coming in, like how'd you break in or what'd you do or, you know, like literally, comic books are, I had a couple of like job kind of things, but like comic books are all I wanted to do ever. And it was because of, it might have been because of that. Like I didn't think about it that way, but it probably was because of that. Like I, New York is right there, Marvel's right there, DC right there. It was always a thing, you know. And then you find out, you, you always hear stories, or you see an artist that you like, and they like he broke in at like Joe Mad or something like that. You know, like he broke in at like 17 or whatever. You know, like so when I'm in high school, I'm like fuck, I can start do it now. You know, and Image Comics blew up, and it was like this whole thing about indie comics and Image, and you know, so like I felt like it was like I could do this. I just got to get someone to look past my terrible drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't look past that <laughs> terrible drawing. I mean, that was the other thing too. Not not just comic books either, just art in general. Like SVAs here, and then the Art Students League, and like they have like great art, you know. I mean, there's a uh, School of Art and Design stuff too, like you know, 
Uh, all, all, there's other stuff too that wasn't necessarily my interest, but still, like, there's all this art here. I feel like in terms of an art path, you're like the dude who survived the Kumite. <laughs> like, you've had, you know, it's like blood sport. Like, yeah. all these fighters with, like, super, you know, a street fighter character. It's like you've survived the super art competition. You know, like, you've, you've been through it, so even if you didn't win, you've fought enough really difficult fights. Yeah. You know, you gain a lot from each. Yeah. Like just knowing that there's that competition and that Yeah, well I mean that, I, I, I think I think that goes back to what I would say about school too cuz I I went to a semester of SVA. Um and then like you know a couple classes here and there and whatever uh live drawing session type you know like, but I I didn't really go to school. But whenever anybody asked me should I go to school I'm like yes because maybe because I was close to New York and and, uh, and then even a couple of friends I did have that weren't in college, they also were artists and, and they wanted to get into it too. And like, you know, so I had like kind of people around me and then that's what it really gives you, I feel. Like art school gives you a community that'll, that'll kind of put you in the mindset of being an artist and, and other people are doing it. And there's probably a lot of people are even doing it better than you are. And, and so you have goals to hit and, and you know, all that stuff. They push each other, you get ideas. And then putting yourself in that environment, I think is like the number one thing to, to help you like push into that career it's something that I guess I was able to plug into though from where I was living and, and where I was around so it was easy to never think of any other career or think of any you know like like a lot of people have to do like a day job or this and that and I definitely did some of that stuff but it was always like like yeah I'm not you know like I, I even worked at Marvel I told you this in production in, in like the bullpen uh, but in production, of like just like scanning pages, and that, you know. But the whole time I was there, I was like at my desk doing sample pages and walking down the hallway to the editors. We had stacks of art. Yeah. That was the other thing. I got to see pro work. I could just go through it all the whole the whole day, you know. And I would just grab a stack, go to my desk, and just scan them in one by one, you know. Clean them up a little bit or whatever. I I never cleaned them up too much. It had nothing to do with laziness. It had to do with the fact that I I'm just an artist. That I'm like I hate clean work. And like, I want to see mistakes. I want to see it. So I'm like, I'm not going to like, let that. That's what the artist did. That's the, you know, I'm not going to clean it up on him. I'm not going to change anything he did. This is the way he handed it in. This is the way it's going to Somewhere there is like an artist going like, that motherfucker never cleans up my yeah. art. Left all my gutters dirty. <laughs> yeah. And then literally after a year, it was on my birthday. I was like, I quit. Like with no prospects at all. Like, you know, like all that is like, oh yeah, you're pretty good. You're almost there. This and that. But I was like, nope, I'm leaving because I'm not doing this. This is not what I want to do. I like the idea that you got kicked out of the bullpen when you were a little kid and then you went on to work in the bullpen. Yeah. So maybe there's some weird time paradox where you kicked yourself <laughs> out of the Marvel bullpen. Awesome. You're like, there was some old guy and he answered the door. And it was all along. It was yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember like trying to break in and then hearing people, other people trying to break in or just broke in or other artists that even like had a career talking with them and I always heard them say things like like oh man I love joining these action scenes you know but I hate these boring scenes with the, you know and I was always like I don't understand what you're talking about like it's all comics I, think, I love the medium you know I think that's the thing me and you bonded over it's yeah just, I remember the first time I'm just as a phony aside I remember the first time I met you you were at it was at like Chicago it's like Wizard World Chicago. Uh -huh. Okay. And I went up to talk to you, and right before I did, it was like Ivan had come over and said, "Oh yeah, you don't know Paul? You should go introduce yourself to Paul." Mike Mignola says he's the best young <laughs> artist. And I remember I was like, "Yeah, I'll show that motherfucker who the best <laughs> young artist is." So everything was a lot more competitive than it should have been. And I remember when I met you, I was just kind of like, "Fuck that guy." <laughs> no, I just like went over there to be like. Yeah, let's see. Let me go size this yeah. motherfucker up and see if if, <laughs> if that's true or not. Yeah. And then there was another time when we were the second time I met you. <coughs> we were having drinks here at the pool hall. Uh huh. Uh, and we started to get into an argument about Sin City and then agreed it with it with each other. Well, that that, well, <laughs> that, that, that I was gonna say that that's what I remember. I mean, I I, I yeah. met you before that, obviously, and. Yeah. And so, but I mean, the time I think I remember that we actually like kind of clicked and like yeah. actually like okay now this is a guy I could like yeah, talk exactly. to hang out was over Sin City. 
the movie certainly spurred the conversation. Yeah. But it's always like a really amazing moment when you find somebody. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're like, wait, this motherfucker sees what's happening on yeah. this page. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, it's definitely, I mean, there's, there's, there's a few people like that where like, I, uh, usually I want to work with them is what it is. So I'm yeah. like, I found somebody who like, as much of a pain as, as in, in the ass they are, whatever, but I'm like, there's something that we see the same. And I feel like that means that like, working together is going to grow. Because I've I worked with a whole bunch of writers now, you know, and there's been some great and some bad or, or whatever, but even like good writers or, or good collaborators, you know, like people that are collaborating with you that are super talented, if you're not on the same page or if you don't have, have the same kind of view, it can still lead to like not a great working relationship. That That's what I look for now. Like, you know, when I'm, like, I keep telling people that from now on, I would like to just, I'm just working with friends. You know, like I love to either, I'm either writing it myself and drawing it, or if I'm working with someone else that's writing and I'm drawing, like it's gonna be a friend. And when I, really what I mean about that is that there, I have friends that we, I know we see eye to eye on certain things and you know, and other people that I don't wanna just get involved with, other people, great as writers they are, whatever they do, it's still like, I don't know if we work together well, which is different, you know? You know, it's just, it's just the thing I talk about a lot. It's just it's just like being able to communicate yeah. trumps everything. You know, because it's, it's like, a. I mean, you probably can speak to this more than I can because you've been married forever. Uh-huh. But yeah. you just need somebody that, like, brings out the parts of you that are lacking. Yeah, I, I always compliments said... Compliments you in the right way. Yeah, I always said, like, Austria is... Uh, like I remember, I used to say because I was, I was, I got married young, yeah. and then some people would, they, you know, they, they, they would never like out and out say like, like, oh, you're, you're fucked up, you got married too young kind of thing. But they was like, oh, that's, uh, that's really cool. That's so young. They always had that like, weird either backhanded compliment or like you can see like they're like beating around the bush a little bit, of, you know. Yeah. And the thing I always said is like, listen, I'm sure there's still stuff I can learn about her. Like I met her for years before that, so it's, so it's, it's a specific situation in that sense. But, but either way, like, there's probably still stuff I'm going to learn about. She's going to grow up and I'm going to grow up. I said, but the thing why I know this is going to work, and I've been right so far, because so far it's worked, is that I know we see the big so things. So far being 16 years? Yeah. Or... <laughs> 15, yeah. 15 years. I always make the joke that it would come tax time when we're doing the thing, and I would just apologize. Once I, like, <laughs> added up my income that year, I'm like, fuck, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, like, shit, I didn't even realize it was that little. I thought I at least made, at least, at least broke 10000 like, but no. <laughs> shit i'm sorry you know but her credit like she not 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 that she didn't complain because a lot of people cannot complain but like it wasn't even a i don't even a thought in her head to, to even like complain or yeah you know, she was just always like no no we're in this together whatever like as long as we have money for the bills and, and she had a good job she has a good job you know like nursing and whatever and it wasn't even like it didn't even cross her mind it's amazing, to like to like say like hey you're not pulling your your slack like she saw what i was doing trying to do I think I just never like question like my my goals or, or, or that I'm trying to it's gonna take time or whatever. And she was fine like paying everything sometimes. And, but, you know, like, so like that kind of thing is like invaluable, you know? That's amazing because like we were saying as we were walking earlier, that so many people you meet in your life who want to be a part of your life or already are a part of your life. It's like, just because your talent demonstrates something, they still don't have enough evidence. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's like, to have somebody in your life, be it your parent or your girlfriend or your wife or your brother or your boyfriend or whatever, somebody who just has faith. Yeah. You know, I feel like anybody that has that, it's like, I'm not a religious person, but it's definitely the definition of the word of blessing. Yeah. And yeah, and that kind of thing is like never had any pressure from her. Never had, so so it became a thing where like, well, it's gonna happen. Like I knew, you know what I mean? Like, and like, then it know, did. Like, yeah. and then, <laughs> Which is the best part of it. Yeah. The yeah. best part of it is is that it, it did work out, you know. And I almost ruined it because <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to do a book before you did your most successful project. And if I hadn't got the fuck out of the way, yeah. where would you be? There you go. Yeah. Like a true narcissist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a true narcissist you are. I'm taking credit for... It's all you. Yeah. A lot, lot of Kirkman. Well, it's funny because, like, I think it might have... Well, it wouldn't have been a tough decision. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Even with Spider Gwen under my belt, there ain't nothing like that walking dead money. <laughs> if tomorrow, for whatever reason, uh, Southern Bats, right? That's the thing you're doing now. That's a creator own thing. That's that that goes to a movie or it's like Walking Dead, like kind of thing. A show, whatever. It hit, and you're like, whatever, multi-millionaire, this and that. You know, like, would you still do comics? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd still do them. You still do. I just wouldn't I'm do them. My, my point, my point yeah. is that like, like taking out anything monetary or anything like needing to do it to live or say, like your your life is set. I would do something creative, and I certainly think comics are something I'm in love with. So yeah. it's not a thing that I would be able to. I don't think I'd be able to quit them. Yeah. You know, it's the most like foundational expression of. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's the easiest thing from here to there. Yeah. I've asked other creators, and they said they wouldn't do comics, and I'm, I'm just amazed at that. You know, like, like, I, I mean, I'm not amazed at it. Like, I understand, like, some, not everybody, like, this is their complete dream, and it's not. But, I, but I'm talking about like successful people. Comic books aren't big enough, I feel, to be like in it just because, like, oh, so we're living. You know. Yeah. Like, why didn't you just go the other route? There's no way on earth I would do this if I didn't feel like it was the best way I communicate. Yeah. Because you know. why? Because why do? I mean, I'm saying, but like, I, would, but would you I be am... satisfied with just like you had this like? Because like for me, like for instance, like the stories I've come up with that I'm gonna eventually do very soon, um, they all usually start with like a feeling, right? Like I have this moment or this thing that happens to me or whatever it is. And I'm like, oh man, that's really cool, and I kind of it translates into my brain to like the story, and then it kind of builds from there, and I'm trying to express that feeling out. But that's not. The end of it, you know what I mean? Like, would it be a, satisfying enough just to get that feeling out on paper? Like, like ah, that that's what it was. That was that that was that was the thing I was feeling. Or would it be like, no, I need someone else to see this to see if that like, if, then it becomes real or it becomes you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not 100 percent about this either. I'm just saying this is a thought I've been having. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's on camera. Because Paul as a Santa will fight. He'll do more time tonight. Paul as a Santa! Never forget ya! He's a more time guy! More! More time guy!